welcome everyone to tonight's reading and i'm just going to open this up with a little bit of prayer and then we'll get right into um the book of maccabees we will stop periodically and kind of bounce around and some of you guys may want to talk and discuss what's taking place you're going to hear some things that sound like they come from the book of daniel like abomination of desolation uh, this is really important in understanding uh, books like daniel um, many people don't realize that the abomination of desolation actually already took place and it had had taken place even before the time of Yeshua. In Matthew 24, when he refers to this, and Matthew puts in parentheses, let the reader who reads understand, he was telling us something very deep. Um, so you will hear in this uh, story, um, this taking actually taking place as a historical record. So with that, Abba Yehud, we're just so thankful for this group. We ask that you bless them and open their eyes and ears and hearts to this uh, reading tonight and teach us all in your ways. In Yeshua's name, amen. amen. All right. So, uh, Darla's got the Sefer. Are you going to read over here? Well, I get on the mic. So. Yes. So, I'll let her come <laughs> over here and I will be on her. And uh, she can see a little better than I can at the moment, guys. Um, so, <coughs> periodically, we can stop if you guys want to um, interject something or point something out. I usually do because uh, it's it's really good to kind of keep on pointing what's going on. So, welcome, everyone. Everybody. Okay. Hello. This is Maccabee and Rishon, which means first Maccabees. And it happened after that Alexander, son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Kittim, had smitten Daryavesh, king of the Persians, we would know him as Darius, and Madai, that he reigned in his stead the first over Yavon, and made many wars and won many strongholds and slew the kings of the earth and went through to the kings of the earth and took spoils of many nations, insomuch that the earth was quiet before him, whereupon he was exalted and his heart was lifted up, and he gathered a mighty strong host and ruled over countries and nations and kings who became tributaries unto him. And after these things he fell sick and perceived that he should die, wherefore he called his servants such as, such as were honorable and had been brought up with him from his youth, and parted his kingdom among them while he was yet alive. So Alexander reigned twelve years and then died. And his servants bore rule every one in his place. And after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves. So did their sons after them many years. And evils were multiplied in the earth. And there came out of them a wicked ruler, Antiochus, surnamed Epiphanes, son of Antiochus the king, who had been a hostage at Rome, and he reigned in the hundred and thirty and seventh year of the kingdom of Yabanim. In those days went there out of Israel wicked men who persuaded many, saying, Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us. For since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. So this device pleased them well. Then certain of the people were so forward herein that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinances of the heathen, whereupon they built a place of exercise at Jerusalem according to the customs of the heathen, and made themselves uncircumcised, and forsook the holy covenant, and joined themselves to the heathen, and were sold to do mischief. Now when the kingdom was established before Antiochus, he thought to reign over Mitraim, or Egypt, that he might have the dominion of two realms, Wherefore he entered into Mitzrayim, or Egypt, with a great multitude, multitude, with chariots and elephants and horsemen and a great navy, and made war against Ptolemy, king of Mitzrayim, or Egypt. But Ptolemy was afraid of him and fled, and many were wounded to death. Thus they got the strong cities in the land of Mitzrayim, and he took the spoils thereof. And after that Antiochus had smitten Mitzrayim, Egypt, he returned again in the hundred forty and third year and went up against Israel and Jerusalem with a great multitude and entered proudly into the sanctuary and took away the golden altar and the menorah of light and all the vessels thereof. 
and the table of the showbread and the pouring vessels and the vials and the censers of gold and the veil and the crown and the golden ornaments that were before the temple, all which he pulled off. He took also the silver and the gold and the precious vessels. Also he took the hidden treasures which he found. And when he had taken all away, he went into his own land, having made a great massacre and spoken very proudly. Therefore, there was a great mourning in Israel and every place where they were, so that the princes and elders mourned, and the virgins and young men were made feeble, and the beauty of women was changed. Every bridegroom took up lamentation, and she that sat in the marriage chamber was in heaviness. The land also was moved for the inhabitants thereof, and all the house of Jacob was covered with confusion. And after two years fully, expired the king sent his chief collector of tribute unto the cities of Yehuda, who came unto Jerusalem or Jerusalem with a great multitude and spoke peaceable words unto them but all was deceit for when they had given him credence he fell suddenly upon the city and smote it very sore and destroyed much people of Israel as everybody understand what is taking place here when it's talking about Antiochus Epiphanes uh, we're talking about the, the desecration of the temple. Um, that he, he actually went in there, destroyed it, stole uh, the gold um, utensils and ornaments, um, and also sacrificed a pig on the altar. Uh, this is roughly 175 years before the birth of Yeshua. So, uh, historical fact. And when he had taken the spoils of the city, he set it on fire and pulled down the houses and walls thereof on every side. But the women and children took they captive and possessed the cattle. Then built they the city of David with a great and strong wall and with mighty towers and made it a stronghold for them. And they put therein a sinful nation, wicked men, and fortified themselves therein. They stored it also with armor and victuals, and when they had gathered together the spoils of Jerusalem, they laid them up there, and so they became a sore snare, for it was a place to lie in wait against the sanctuary and an evil adversary to Israel. Thus they shed innocent blood on every side of the sanctuary and defiled it, insomuch that the inhabitants of Jerusalem fled because of them, whereupon the city was made a habitation of strangers, and became strange to those that were born in her, and her own children left her. Her sanctuary was laid waste like a wilderness. Her feasts were turned into mourning, her Sabbaths uh, in, into reproach, her honor into contempt. And had been her glory, so was her dishonor increased, and her excellency was turned into mourning. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people, and everyone should leave his laws, so all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. Yea, many also of Israel consented to his religion, and sacrificed unto idols, and profaned the Sabbath. For the king had sent letters by messengers into Jerusalem and the cities of Yehuda, or Judah, that they should follow the strange laws of the land, and forbid burnt offerings and sacrifice and drink offerings in the temple, and that they should profane the Sabbaths and the feast days, and pollute the sanctuary and holy people, set up altars and asherah poles, and chapels of idols, and sacrifice swine's flesh and unclean beasts, that they should also leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and profanation. To the end they might forget the Torah and change all the ordinances, and whoever would not do according to the commandment of the king, he should, he said, he should die. In the selfsame manner wrote he to his whole kingdom and appointed overseers over all the people, commanding the cities of Yehuda to sacrifice city by city. Then many of the people were gathered unto them to wit every one that forsook the Torah. And so they committed evils in the land and drove Israel into secret places even wheresoever they could flee for help. Now the fifteenth day of the month of Kislu, which is, is this month, in the hundred forty and fifth year, they set up the abomination of desolation upon the altar and built idol altars throughout the cities of Yehuda on every side. 
and burnt incense at the doors of their houses and in their streets. And when they had rent in pieces the sephirim, or the books of the Torah, which they found, they burnt them with fire. And whoever, whosoever was found with any sephir, any book of the covenant, or if any committed to the Torah, the king's commandment was that they should put him to death. Thus did they by their authority unto Israel every month to as many as were found in the cities. Now the five and twentieth day of the month, they did sacrifice upon the idol altar, which was upon the altar of Elohim. And what time, according to the commandment, they put to death certain women that had caused their children to be circumcised. And they hanged the infants about their necks and rifled their houses and slew them that had circumcised them. Howbeit many in Israel were fully resolved and confirmed in themselves not to eat any unclean thing. Wherefore, the rather to die that they might not be defiled with meats and that they might not profane the holy covenant. So then they died and there was very great wrath upon Israel. Now you understand what's taking place here is there were some who would not compromise, not even defile themselves by eating unkosher. Uh, they would rather die than do this. Very, very strong message that some should uh, receive today. Because we see today, even in the body, many willing to compromise, even when the truth is staring them in the face. Chapter 2. In those days arose Matit Yahu, or which means the gift of Yahuwah, the son of Yahukanan, the loving, merciful kindness of Yahuwah, the son of Shimon, a priest of the sons of Yari from Yerushalayim, and dwelt in Modin. After he had five sons, Yaukanan called Kadish, Shimon called Thassai, Yehuda, who was called Maccabee, Eleazar called Arabon, and Yonathan, whose surname was Aphus. And when he saw the blasphemies that were committed in Yehuda and Yerushalayim, he said, Woe is me, wherefore was I born to see this misery of my people and of the holy city, and to dwell there when it was delivered into the hand of the enemy, and the sanctuary into the hand of strangers. Her temple is become as a man without glory. Her glorious vessels are carried away into captivity. Her infants are slain in the streets, her young men with the sword of the enemy. What nation has not had a part in her kingdom and gotten of her spoils? All her ornaments are taken away. Of a free woman, she has become a bond servant. And behold, our sanctuary, even our beauty and our glory is laid waste, and the other people have profaned it. To what end, therefore, shall we live any longer? Then Matit Yahu and his sons rent their clothes and put on sackcloth, and that's like black, and mourned very sore. In the meanwhile, the king's officers, such as compelled the people to revolt, came into the city of Modin to make them sacrifice. And when many of Israel came unto them, Matit Yahu also and his sons came together. Then answered the king's officers and said to Matit Yahu, on this wise, you are a ruler and an honorable and great man in the city and strengthened with sons and brethren. Now, therefore, come you first and fulfill the king's commandment, like as all the heathen have done. Yea, and the men of Yehuda also, and such as remain at Yerushalayim, so shall you and your house be in the number of the king's friends, and you and your children so shall be honored with silver and gold and many rewards. Then Matit Yahu answered and spoke with a loud voice, Though all the nations that are under the king's dominion obey him, and fall away every one from the belief of their fathers, and give consent to his commandments. Yet will I and my sons and my brethren walk in the covenant of our fathers. Far be it that we should forsake the Torah and the ordinances. We will not hearken to the king's words to go from our belief, either on the right hand or the left. Amen. Now, when he had left speaking these words, there came upon, there came one of the Yahudim in the sight of all to sacrifice on the altar, which was at Modin, according to the king's commandment, which thing... When Matit Yahu saw he was inflamed with zeal and his mind trembled, neither could he forbear to show his anger according to judgment. 
wherefore he ran and slew him upon the altar. Also the king's commissioner who compelled men to sacrifice, he killed at that time, and the altar he pulled down. Thus dealt he zealously for the Torah of Elohim, like a Pinnacock did unto Zimri, like as Pinnacock. Uh, they're trying to say Phinkus here, which is Phineas. Phineas did unto Zimri, the son of Shalom. And Matiah, who cried throughout the city with a loud voice, saying, Whosoever is zealous of the Torah and maintains the covenant, let him follow me. So he and his sons fled into the mountains and left all that ever they had in the city. Then many that sought after justice and judgment went down into the wilderness to dwell there, both they and their children and their women and their cattle, because afflictions increased sore upon them. Now when it was told the king's servants and the host that was at Jerusalem in the city of David, that certain men who had broken the king's commandment were gone down into the secret places in the wilderness. They pursued after them a great number, and having overtaken them, they camped against them and made war against them on the Shabbat. And they said unto them, Let that which ye have done hitherto suffice. Come forth and do according to the commandment of the king, and ye shall live. But they said, We will not come forth, neither will we do the king's commandment to profane the Sabbath. So then they gave them the battle with all speed. Howbeit they answered them not, neither cast they a stone at them, nor stopped the places where they, had, they lay hid, but said, Let us die all in our innocency. Heaven and earth will testify for us that, we, that ye put us to death wrongfully. So they rose up against them in battle on the Shabbat, and they slew them with their women and children and their cattle to the number of a thousand people. Now when Matiyahu and his friends understood thereof, they mourned for them right score. And one of them said to another, If we all do as our brethren have done, and fight not for our lives and tour against the heathen, they will now quickly root us out of the earth. At that time, therefore, they decreed, saying, Whosoever shall come to make battle with us on the Sabbath, we will fight against him. Neither will we die all as our brethren that were murdered in the secret places. Then came there unto him a company of um, Hasidians, it's like Hasidic Jews, uh, who were mighty men of Israel, even all, some, all such as were voluntarily devoted unto the Torah. Also all they that fled for persecution joined themselves unto them and were a, were a stay unto them. So they joined their forces and smote sinful men in their anger and wicked men in their wrath. But the rest fled to the heathen for help. Then Matiyahu and his friends went round about and pulled down the altars. And what children soever they found within the coast of Israel uncircumcised, those they circumcised valiantly. They pursued, after, they, they pursued also after the proud men and the work prospered in their hand. So they recovered the Torah out of the hand of the other people, and out of the hand of kings, neither suffered they the sinner to triumph. Now when the time drew near that Matiyahu should die, he said unto his sons, Now has pride and rebuke gotten strength, and the time of destruction and the wrath of indignation. Now therefore, my sons, be ye zealous for the Torah, and give your lives for the covenant of your fathers, Call to remembrance what acts our fathers did in their time, so shall ye receive great honor and an everlasting name. Was not Abraham found faithful in temptation, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness? Yosef, in the time of his distress, kept the commandment and was made lord of Mitzrayim, Egypt. Uh, Phinkus, our father, in being zealous and fervent, obtained the covenant of an everlasting priesthood. Yehushua, for fulfilling the, the word, was made a judge in Israel. Caleb, for bearing witness before the assembly, received the heritage of the land. David, for being merciful, possessed the throne of an everlasting kingdom. Eliyahu, or like Elijah, for being zealous and fervent for the Torah, was taken up into heaven. Kananyahu, uh, Azariahu, and Mishael, by believing, were saved out of the flame. Daniel or Daniel, for his innocency was delivered from the mouth of lions. And thus consider ye throughout all ages that none that 
put their trust in him shall be overcome. Fear not then the words of a sinful man, for his glory shall be dung and worms. Today he shall be lifted up, and tomorrow he shall not be found, because he is returned into his dust, and his thought is come to nothing. Wherefore, ye my sons, be valiant, and show yourselves men in the behalf of the Torah, for by it shall ye obtain glory. And behold, I know that your brother Shimon is a man of counsel. Give ear unto him always. He shall be a father unto you. As for Yehuda Maccabee, he has been mighty and strong, seven, uh, even rather, even from his youth up. Let him be your captain and fight the battle of the people. Take also unto you all those that observe the Torah and avenge ye the wrong of your people. Recompense fully the heathen and take heed to the commandments of the Torah. So he blessed them and was gathered to his fathers, and he died in the hundred forty and sixth year. And his sons buried him in the sepulchres of his fathers at Moedin, and all Yisrael made great lamentation for him. Yes. And this was the father of the sons of, uh, of uh, where the, they were the Maccabee, the Maccabee brothers. brothers. Yeah. yeah. Can we read more? Um, one more chapter. One more we'll, chapter. We'll, okay. we'll go to a discussion. Does everybody understand what's taking place here? Is everybody familiar with the story of the Maccabees? Uh, if not, we will get into that after this chapter. Then his son Yehuda, called Maccabee, rose up in his stead, and all his brethren helped him, and so did all they that helped that held with his father, and they fought with cheerfulness the battle of Israel. So he got his people great honor and put on a breastplate as a giant and girt his warlike harness about him, and he made battles, protecting the host with his sword. And his axe he was like a lion, and like a lion's whelp roaring for his prey. For he pursued the wicked and sought them out and burnt up those that vexed his people. Wherefore, the wicked shrunk for fear of him, and all the workers of iniquity were troubled because salvation prospered in his hand. He grieved also many kings and made Jacob glad with his axe, and his memorial is blessed forever. Moreover, he went through the cities of Yehuda, destroying the wicked out of them and turning away wrath from Israel, so that he was renowned unto the utmost part of the earth, and he received unto him such as were ready to perish. Then Apollonius gathered the other people together and a great host out of Shomeron or Samaria, to fight against Israel, which thing when Yehuda perceived, he went forth to meet him, and so he smote him and slew him. Many also fell down slain, but the rest fled. Wherefore Yehuda took their spoils and Apollonius' sword also, and therewith he fought all his life long. Now when Saron, a prince of the army of Syria, heard say, heard say that Yehuda had gathered unto him a multitude and company of the faithful to go out with him to war. He said, I will get me a name and honor in the kingdom, for I will go fight with Yehuda and them, and them that are with him, who despise the king's commandment. So he made him ready to go up, and there went with him a mighty host of the wicked to help him, and to be avenged of the children of Israel. And when he came near to the going up of Beit Horon, or the, the house of Horon. Yehuda went forth to meet him with a small company, who, when they saw the host coming to meet them, said unto Yehuda, How shall we be able, being so few, to fight against so great a multitude and so strong, seeing we are ready to faint with fasting all this day? Unto whom Yehuda answered, It is no hard matter for many to be shut up in the hands of a few. And with the Elohim of heaven it is all one to deliver with a great multitude or a small company for the victory of battle stands not in the multitude of a host but strength comes from heaven they come against us in much pride and iniquity to destroy us and our women and children and to spoil us but we fight for our lives and our torah wherefore yahuwah himself will overthrow them before our face and as for you be ye not afraid of them now, as soon as he had left off speaking, he leapt suddenly upon them, and so Saron and his host were overthrown before him. On a second. Uh, 
If you guys have a mic on, uh, you might want to turn it off. Till we get to the day. Do you have to turn on um, I don't know how to do it up here. So um, Almost away. I will try to find the time to turn this off. Does that turn it off? Not yet. Hold on a second. We'll see. We got it. Very good. Awesome. Sorry. Um, but we fight for our lives and our Torah. Wherefore, Yahuwah himself will overthrow them before our face. And as for you, be ye not afraid of them. Now, as soon as he had left off speaking, he left suddenly upon them. And so Saron and his host were overthrown before him. And they pursued them from the going forth of Beit Horon unto the plain, where were slain about 800 men of them. And the remnant fled into the land of the Pelishtim, or the Philistines. Then began the fear of Yehuda and his brethren, and an exceeding great dread to fall upon the nations round about them. And so much as his fame came unto the king, and all nations talked of the battles of Yehuda. Now when King Antiochus heard these things, he was full of indig indignation. Wherefore he sent and gathered together all the forces of his realm, even a very strong army. He opened also his treasure and gave his soldiers pay for a year, commanding them to be ready whenever, whensoever he should need them. Nevertheless, when he saw that the money of his treasures failed and that the tributes in the country were small, because of the dissension and plague which he had brought upon the land in taking away the Torah, which had been of old time. So they took the Torah away and they had a plague on them. Yeah, that's what happens in the United States <laughs> when they start taking the Ten Commandments out of public places. Mm -hmm. Same thing. He feared that he should not be able to bear the charges any longer, nor to have such gifts to give so liberally as he did before. For he had abounded above the kings that were before him. Wherefore, being greatly perplexed in his mind, he determined to go into Persia, there to take the tributes of the countries and to gather much money. So he left Lysias, a nobleman, and one of the blood royal, to oversee the affairs of the king from the river Parath, or the Euphrates, unto the borders of Mitzrayim, or Egypt, and to bring up his son Antiochus until he came again. Moreover, he delivered unto him the half of his forces and the elephants and gave him charge of all things that he would have done and also concerning them that dwelt in Yehuda and Jerusalem, to wit that he should send an army against them to destroy and root out the strength of Israel and the remnant of Jerusalem, and to take away their memorial from that place and that he should place strangers in all their quarters and divide their land by lot. So the king took half of the forces that remained and departed from, Anti uh, and from Antioch, his royal city, the hundred forty and seventh year. And having passed the river Perath, or Euphrates, he went through the high countries. Then Lysias chose Ptolemy, the son of Dorymenus, Nicanor, and Georgius, mighty men of the king's friends. And with them he sent 40,000 footmen and 7,000 horsemen, to go into the land of Yehuda and to destroy it as the king commanded. So they went forth with all their power and came and pitched by Yemim in the plain country. And the merchants of the country, hearing the fame of them, took silver and gold very much with servants and came into the camp to buy the children of Israel for slaves, a power also of Syria and of the land of Pelishtim or the Philistines, joined themselves unto them. Now when Yehuda and his brethren saw their miseries were multiplied and that the forces did encamp themselves in their borders for they knew how the king had given commandment to destroy the people and utterly abolish them they said one to another let us restore the decayed fortune of our people and let us fight for our people and the sanctuary then was the assembly gathered together that they might be ready for battle and that they might pray and ask mercy and compassion now Yerushalayim lay void as a wilderness. There was none of her children that went in or out. The sanctuary also was trodden down and aliens kept the stronghold. The heathen had their habitation in that place and joy was taken from Yaakov and the pipe with the harp ceased. Wherefore, Israel assembled together, themselves together and came to Mitzpah over against Jerusalem for in Mitzpah was the place where the, they prayed aforetime 
before in Israel. Then they fasted that day and put on sackcloth and cast ashes upon their heads and rent their clothes and laid open the sepher, the book of the Torah, wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. They brought also the priest's garments and the first fruits and the tithes and the Nazirim they stirred up who had accomplished their days. Then cried they with a loud voice toward heaven, saying, What shall we do with these, and whither shall we carry them away? For your sanctuary is trodden down and profaned, and your priests are in heaviness and brought low. And lo, the heathen are assembled together against us to destroy us. What things they imagine against us you know. How shall we be able to stand against them except you, O Elohim, be our help? Then sounded they with shofars and cried with a loud voice. And after this, Yehuda ordained captains over the people, even captains over thousands and over hundreds and over fifties and over tens. But as for such as were building houses or had betrothed women or were planting vineyards or were fearful, those he commanded that they should return every man to his own house, according to the Torah. So the camp removed and pitched upon the south side of Yamim, and Yehuda said, Arm yourselves, and be valiant men, and see that ye be in readiness against the morning, that ye may fight with these nations that are assembled together against us to destroy us and our sanctuary. For it is better for us to die in battle than to behold the calamities of our people and our sanctuary. Nevertheless, as the will of Elohim is in heaven, so let him do. All right. Oh, boy. Uh. Great stuff. So, we're talking about extraordinary time. Of course, all of this was taking place long before Yeshua. See, um, uh, before the Romans were in control, the Greeks had control. And so that's what was happening. There was a group that had compromised and was all along and all for um, the Greek um, assimilation. But then there were those who were uh, zealous and uh, came against it. And uh, this is the story that we're reading. This is where we get the Hanukkah story. Um, a lot of people believe that this is a story about eight days without oil, which is a part of the oral tradition, but um, this is the real story behind um, Hanukkah. So, welcome everyone. This is uh, kind of a trial run with the public Zoom meetings. This is a platform that we use for our class at the Bible Code um, School, but we thought we'd open it up sometimes to the public to, you know, for discussions, prayer groups, whatever. We're just kind of seeing how it goes. So, uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, that is the first part of the reading we're going to do. Uh, we will continue on as the week goes with the rest of Maccabees. So um, for the rest of the night, I just kind of want to open it up to you guys. I know there's some here just here just to ask questions, but uh, as long as we can keep it civil and there's not anyone wanting to fight, I'm willing to, to <laughs> Anyway. Hallelujah. Welcome, everyone. Anyone want to take the floor? Do you want to introduce yourselves? I see some familiar faces, and then there are some um, I don't recognize the handle. We do have a couple of students. So Benjamin's here, and Lori is here. Uh, who else? We can only see so many at one time. Uh, Jonathan, this is Lori. Um, I just want to quickly uh, ask you because a few people have asked me uh on here when i got here earlier um about thanksgiving if you can kind of explain to them oh yeah um yeah that situation because a lot of stuff's going on with that one <laughs> yeah i wouldn't let, let let's not let things like that be a divisive thing um I, I saw that on the blog and what she's talking about folks is something that's happening on one of our class uh, blogs which is from flow is a debate about uh, Thanksgiving and is a, a pagan holiday. And the way I look at it as uh, it is a cultural holiday. Um, there's, there's a difference when you have a, a pagan holiday. Pagan would be in the form of worship. 
uh, and and that's what happened when they integrated um, or they tried to bring the believers in from feast to uh, pagan holidays. But the, the the Thanksgiving came around, from my understanding, uh, from the pilgrims who were a very highly religious people. Um, so they were giving thanks to Elohim. Now, had they been giving thanks to Apollo or Zeus or something like that, and that's how it originated, then it would be a pagan holiday, in my opinion. Uh, of course, this is just my opinion, um, but uh, we personally did not um, you know, participate in the cultural Thanksgiving, which is usually uh, eating a lot of turkey and food and, and um, fellowship with family and a lot of football and things like that. Uh, but what we did was decided to read the book of Maccabees. It, it just so happened to go inside with Hanukkah, which uh, of course is a month earlier for us here because we are not on the Hillel calendar. We are going by uh, the scripture. So uh, Hanukkah was actually a month earlier than what the Jews are going to be celebrating. So it, it fell on uh, what is celebrated as, as Thanksgiving. So it's Hanukkah yeah. today. Yeah, it actually is. It's the second day of Hanukkah today. <laughs> wow. So, uh -oh. Anyway. Welcome, everyone. Has any got, anybody got any questions while you got me here? This is, uh, again, probably going to be a platform we will use frequently to do things like this, to, uh, you know, do think tanks, to do, um, you know, discussions. A lot of times people want to um, interact with myself and Darla, and this is a perfect place to do that. This is uh, at least uh, a more su su uh, stable um, platform than the tiny chat and I think I saw Mary are you here Mary she knows what I'm talking about where's she at Mary Harris old friend sister she knows what I'm talking about we used to use a platform called tiny chat and it would freeze up and it was awful uh, but this this is a very seems like a very secure and, and stable one some new faces, oh, Ron Penny, uh, and who is that again? B. Dave. Uh, do I know you guys, Bob Flanders? Some some, some um, new faces. Ron, Ron Penny is Captain Ron. Captain RPG. Ron, are you speaking? Let's see. Yeah. I think you may be muted. I don't think your microphone's working. Not working? Working on my end, Jonathan. No, it's you nothing. Type. You can type, but there's uh, there's no sound coming through. Yeah. Okay. You can hear. Me. Wow. How come I cannot hear you? That's if you can, if you can oh. let Jonathan. Can anybody talk. else hear hear Ron speaking? Yes. Yeah, I can. Hear. Yes, I can. Yeah, if you can let Jonathan know it's yeah, Captain Ron. I, don't know. Mm -hmm. I hear Captain Ron. All right, hold on a second. Let me make sure my volume is down. Now that's weird. See, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes on my computers, folks, my controls have a mind of its own. So uh, again, now it's up. Now I can hear. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Shalom. Oh, Captain Ron, Captain RPG. Awesome. Yes. I don't know if you remember me. Um, been following you for a few years now. Okay. Yeah. Um, it, you know what? Uh, some may not realize this, but um, when you're doing a YouTube channel, and, and mine, I don't, mine's not particularly big, I can imagine what the big channels are like, but there are times where it's, it's almost three to 500 running conversations that are going on with people. And uh, so for me to remember faces and names is very difficult. I know about 50 Rons, 50 Bills, 50 Bobs. And here's the funny thing. Sometimes I'll be in a conversation with one and another Bob will come along and I will, you know, maybe weeks later be continuing that conversation. And this Bob would be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and I'm like, wait, wait a minute. Okay. So, 
you know, sometimes notebooks are good to have to keep people, um, but, uh, you know, it's really hard to do that. But uh, I'm sure I've, I've, I've come across you somewhere, Ron, and just I'm not putting the face to anything. I think you'd remember we had a conversation about follow the white rabbit. And I said, make sure you have your 50 Beowulf. Oh yeah. 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 The 50 Beowulf. <laughs> yes. Doesn't remember. <laughs> that's the, uh, that's a um, matrix uh, reference. Yeah. Oh boy. Awesome. Hey Jonathan, I have a quick question. Yes. Is your guys' Sabbath tomorrow? We've already started. Uh, this month, it is on Monday. Is it Monday still, darling? Yeah, it's still Monday on the yeah. Gregorian calendar. On, yeah, it is on Monday for the Gregorian calendar. It rotates every month, just like the feast. Uh, I know that's hard for some people to, to, to get that, but Hillel, actually under duress, was forced to create a calendar that was universal, and they set in stone the uh, actual, uh, their sabbat, so that everybody, could, it would just be easier for everybody. The ones who hold it most close uh, is the Karaite Jews, of all people. Uh, they keep a, a shabbat. What it is, is you're supposed to go out each month and sight the moon, and... Um, and that that is to, to how and then with the feast you also set, set the year uh, that way um they change that they start their new year and the seventh month and um hence the confusion we have in the la latter days with uh days and years um now they even admit they're somewhere around 230 years off on the millennial count so uh, I believe we're pro probably closer to the 6,000 mark than uh, they, they believe. Uh, okay. But even if I'm wrong, there's what Yeshua said, unless the days be shortened, uh, there would no, be, no flesh would survive. But um, one thing we're discovering, guys, is, is they're definitely off on their counts. I think that we're supposed to be calibrating and getting the Shemitahs and Jubilees down because it's a part of, um, who was count? He, he he lays out 120 jubilees will be given. Um, that's 6,000 years, and I believe we're right at it. To be quite honest, yeah. So the Sabbath already started, correct? It's on Monday. It's on Monday. It starts Monday. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. Are you talking about Hanukkah or are you talking about the weekly sh Shabbat? The weekly Sabbath Shabbat, yes, that's what I'm trying to understand. I'm getting confused about that. Not everybody does that. Let's see really clear. This we're talking about keeping the, the Shabbat based on the count of the moon. That is going out and sighting the moon every month. Now now this could get you know, this could get lost in, in cultural ways of doing things, let's just say. That's why I said Hillel under distress was forced to do this calendar. Uh, that laid things out years and years and years ahead so that Jews all around the world would do things at the same time. And there wouldn't be, uh, you know, in, in the ancient times, there would be people with shofars on tops of mountains, and they would be signaling one another um, and communicating in that fashion. Uh, of course, we live in a modern age, so telephones and, and high-speed communications, uh, there's not needed. But you know, say they held to what Hillel does. Um, they have not gone back to what the scripture says to do. Because I saw on this one calendar, um, it said to celebrate the Shabbat every 9th, 15th, 22nd, and 29th on the pagan calendar on those days. Yep. Is that right, Darla? 8 15, what? 8 15, 22, and 29? Yep. Eight, yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. And here's another thing. Some people go by what's called the Enochian or Enoch calendar, where there's 30 day months. Um, th there was a shift in this um, based on the deep rotation of the moon, I believe, because of the flood. So um, we now have a longer year. So, 
again, I believe all of these things are going to be reconciled when Yeshua comes, and we will, we will actually go back, probably back to a 30-day count. But anyway, anybody got any other questions? Or anything you want to talk about? have a big one, but sorry. You know, guys, Chris, Ray, and we, we haven't done this publicly. We did this in a, in a, a Zoom meeting this past couple of weeks, but he has found something really incredible um, that validates, actually validates a theory that we have had about the codes. And it comes from um, the 119 Psalms uh, and something that is sort of encrypted there. Uh, we'll talk about the word kakuti. Uh, which in English is precepts. When you, when you were told to rightly divide, precept to precept, um, along that, that fashion, uh, with some amazing revelation came out of that. Um, I talked to him early tonight and wanted to do a video with him and wasn't able to squeeze it in. Um, tonight, but maybe we can get that out soon. You're going to be amazed at what we found. You know, the misconception of some people is that uh, the codes must be for predicting the future. Uh, even some people have YouTube channels doing it. Um, I highly disagree with that, and I believe there is a half dozen other reasons that you will put it in the Bible. And uh, Chris's discovery absolutely proves that inside and out. Uh, and we you know, kind of want to share that with you, but. Um, I don't want to spoil it either. So be looking for that in a video form pretty soon. I have an important question to ask. Sure. Uh, you did a video on who the elect are. Right. And you mentioned that he will reveal it to you or show you in a dream his seal on your forehead. Okay. I've been given that. Really? No. Well, my my question is: um, the jury was given the name Yahushua. Mm-hmm. Right, Yahushua. Uh, I was given Yeshua. Really? The difference between is the extra vav, um, which we had in a in a word study in. Uh, under, some understanding Darla and uh, Deborah Bates, we, we figured out that the first spelling in, implies an incompleteness, uh, and there is a completeness with the second bomb. So that, that's an amazing revelation that we use this name because we know that Yeshua is coming with a different name. Um, yeah, I did have a dream also where I believe I said Yahushua or something referring to that. Um, it wasn't as clear as the other um, dreams that I was uh, given. That was uh, probably the most beautiful dream I've ever had. <laughs> um, and um, I'm doing the best that I can. It kind of remind me of Moses, you know, when he said, you know, I'm not a man of speech. Right. Um, I am learning, mm. and I am learning more since I've been watching you and Dr. And uh, my Bible's falling apart, and I'm on the King, but we're doing the restored names. <clears throat> That's my uh, King and, right there. It's falling apart too. So, and I will tell you, it is dividing um, family because my family does not understand that we do not celebrate uh, the Gregorian calendar. Right. We follow our father's feast. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I have a lot of questions. <laughs> sure. You know, he, he, and people are raising hands. Now, I've never seen that on this function. So uh, that is Stephanie. We'll get to you in just a second, Stephanie. Um, just let me uh, kind of address that. So I've never I was seen just that function. <laughs> Say again? I was wondering, um, do you know anyone else that has been – given that it has been revealed the seal of Yahuwah. I believe so. Yeah, a lot of people. And, and we get, you know, hundreds of emails and people that are you know, 
affirming all around around the world. And you're absolutely right. Um, there, there is division. Don't let anyone tell you, especially those that are good with sound bites uh, about dividing and, and those that come to divide. Uh, Yeshua said it comes with a sword and you come to divide. Uh, he's yeah. going to divide the sheep from the goats and the wheat from the tips. So that is happening in a lot of families where people are drawing a line in the sand and they're taking a stand for what they believe is is right. They're not going to compromise. It's, you know, the, the theme of, of Maccabees is no compromise. And standing on the Torah, if you, if you were listening there, that was what they were standing on, the Torah. And, yeah. and, and these people had, for those that, did, that had compromised, they were completely cool with just going the whole Greek. Uh, we got somebody unmuted. What was that? Someone's unmuted. I'm unmuted. Let me, let me mute myself. I didn't realize. I'm sorry. Well, you, sometimes we'll get feedback. When you got this many people in a Zoom meeting, you can get feedback, uh, which is it's okay. Um, so. so is there going to be an appointed time during tribulation where the father releases his spirit, you know, or, um, I will be able to preach better or, you know, absolutely. Uh, I believe this is spoken of in the book of Joel when he, when he says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Um, some, Pre-trib rapture believers believe that's only those that are left out, you know, left in the tribulation. Um, what we have discovered in the codes is the um, there is a catching away. But this does not take place before there is a tribulation. This is all a part of the pattern. Of this this plan. So, um, okay, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I hope that didn't confuse you. <laughs> and <laughs> you know, and I have to be really careful with with new believers because uh, there are some that are just so they're holding on to this thought of a rapture and escape of hard times that that's their only hope, and they lose sight of Yeshua, and that is who they should put their hope in into, and so. Exactly. And, and, you know, you know Jonathan, I, I never believed in a pre-trib rapture. You know, all my life, I've had dreams of devastation and, and, and uh, desolation. Yeah. You know, growing up in, in the church, I always felt that I was going to be left behind. Yeah. Now, you know, my, my dad, you know, my, my family, they were brought up in the church and, 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 and that, and, and all of that. So uh, now my father, who has made it clear to me, you know, that um, I, I wasn't. And many times he's tried to reach me before. Mm. Dreams, I've had many dreams of lions, you know, and they weren't there to hurt me. They just watched me, you know. And uh, I've tried to share this with other people, and I see where they're stuck. They still want to keep the JC. Um, they, they don't want to acknowledge Yeshua. Yeah. Um, they, they, they want to, and they don't understand. I've approached a few people that don't even want to hear it. They get mad. I know. I know. They they always believe see that they're saved. They believe that they're saved through their faith. I'm a Christian, been a Christian all my life. I know I'm saved, you know, and it breaks my heart because they don't see what I see. I know it. Darla and I both know exactly what you're talking about. And that was a conundrum I had when, uh, because I searched all of this out in the codes. And when I discovered some of the things that, that pointed me in that direction, that's why you guys saw a drastic turn in, in some say, well, you know, code church has gone all out Hebrew. He's gone all out Jew. <laughs> yeah. and the whole, you know, sacred name movement. But, but guys, I'm going to do a, a, a teaching here very soon. Do you realize how many scriptures refer to the name in some context about exalting the name and, you know, praising the name, calling upon the name? So uh, the enemy is very cunning. And through the work of man, and in particularly the, the Roman Catholic Church and the Orthodox Jews during the Babylonian uh, exile, this was removed and hidden. Uh, 
and changed. Even the name Jesus, that didn't even exist until uh, 500 years ago. If you go and look at the 1611, uh, the, the name is Yeshua. Um, it's clear as uh, clear as day. And each of these names have a meaning, especially in, in the Hebrew. So uh, translating it over into something else, you know, Latin and then Greek and then English, there's a lot lost in translation, even enough to askew. Um, I think it matters. We're talking about Elohim that details matter. Come on, guys. Two sons of Aaron brought in strange fire. I don't believe they meant it maliciously. I think they were very ignorant, and they weren't paying attention to detail, and they paid a price for that. Um, some will say, well... You know, who is, he's, grace for, he's gracious, he's merciful. Uh, and I believe that. Yes, he is. He is. And he does say, for my name's sake, will I save them? Well, what about this? What about when you're shown the truth and then you absolutely reject that? And then to take it a step further, you pick up rocks and start throwing at people that are trying to, re, you know, share that truth to other people. Imagine standing before the, the king of the universe and answering for that, because if, to me, that's just preposterous for someone to, to you know, uh, good friends that I've had on YouTube and, and Facebook for years to just completely walk away from me because um, I found the code that said, restore the name, restore the name Yahuwah. And it's not impronounceable, folks. Any Jew in, in Israel knows how to pronounce it. Um, it's just they don't want you to. Who doesn't want you to pronounce it? The enemy don't want you to pronounce his name. So um, to, to be the one to stand on that and to proclaim that and draw the line, stand, the line in the sand, um, I had to stand on that because he, he proved that to me in the codes and in his word. It's, it's important. It's very important. And um, it is not unknowable. It's not unknowable at all. There was nothing taken out of the yod heh vav -He. There was vowel points put under to indicate whether it was Adonai or Elohim. And that is even written in the Talmud. It's very clear that that was the case. Uh, you may hear that there was some mystical thing that happened where they removed the shin and they added this and that and then they scrambled letters. That's nonsense. Um, that would be totally forbidden um, to do that with the scriptures. Um, these Jews would have been put to death for doing that. So all they did was put vowel points under, which were dots. Um, so uh, anyway, that, that's why I've, I've taken such a stance on it. Um, I don't judge people for using the name Jesus or saying God or anything like that. Um, but like Joshua, as for me and mine, um, we will serve him. We will call him by his name. We'll do what the word says to do. It says call upon his name. It didn't say call upon, you know, what King James says to call him. Uh, so it makes sense. It's just logic, guys. It is not uh, being a fanatic about it. It's just, you know what? Um, I'm going to do what it says. So I try to lead by example as well. I don't force it down nobody's throat. I, I just try to lead by example. And I can tell you, since in doing that, I've lived a healthier life. I've lived a more prosperous life and happier in doing that. I don't, you know, feel as miserable as I was exactly, you know, what, 16 months ago or so when I was in, you know, the worst of hell. What a turnaround. So. Wow. Yeah. Anybody got anything else? Can you hear me? Sure. Welcome, oh. Wendy. Hi. Um, I'm. I was looking tonight to find online of just a free Bible code program right. to poke around with. Is there any that you recommend online? Because the one I found that I tried to download said it wasn't. It could be not secure, so yeah. not to follow it. Right. Yeah. And what you have is you got some people who are um, atheists, for one, that have set up some booby traps for, for people who are interested in codes. And so there are some sites on the Internet that are infectious and they have viruses. Now, Torosoft was, by the way, 
a free download at one point. It was offered by the rabbis in Jerusalem um, as a mitzvot for people, common people, to search out codes. There was a, a, um, a challenge put out for people to do that. And so they offered this program for free. Uh, and what happened was uh, I was using it and was doing YouTube videos and happened to be talking about Islam and the connection to, to the Catholicism. And this enraged someone in Indonesia that was a Muslim and made a lot of threats to me and a lot of threats to my family and stuff. And uh, what happened was he hacked my computer and destroyed a lot of files. And he also hacked the site where you could get the free download. So um, it, they completely took it down. And um, the, the, the people who had it never repaired it or put it back up. So luckily, uh, Chris and I had copies of it. And we, we make multiple copies because it's been a target. Uh, with, for instance, when I was in Dallas, it was specifically targeted in my computers to, to infect and to uh, destroy my files and that program. So uh, the, the fail safe to that, so to speak, was external hard drives and my brother Chris, who has it on several external hard drives. And when that happens, we just uh, reload it again and put our files back in there. So. Um, I don't know of anything else that is free and uh, exactly what is free and what does that mean? Um, you know, there's a Bible code wisdom app that I'm seeing some Yahoo use for his YouTube videos, which is completely ridiculous because it's not a code program. It's a word finder. It, it finds words all on the same page. Uh, this is not what we're doing here, guys. This is not um, Torah code or Bible codes. Um, it's a gimmick. It's designed to get you over there so that you can see all the ads that pop up. Um, so um, I don't know of anything that's out there that, that's for free. Now, um, we are in, in the, um, the program that we're providing. We're providing two different programs, which is all included in the subscription uh, of that class. So and we also teach how to use that uh, as well. If you want to go and get a, a code program, I would recommend Code Finder, which is the top of the line. This is the best of the best. It has, uh, you know, it has it in English, Greek, and in Hebrew, uh, the, the codes. It also has uh, control uh, text, like Gone with the Wind, and I believe um, Movie Dick is the other, so that you can see that uh, what they say, well, you can find codes in Moby Dick. Well, you can actually go and search it yourself and see that that is an absolute, you know, sound bite. It's a bunch of misinformation. Stephanie, go ahead. Sorry you had to wait so long. Where'd you go? Let's see. Is she muted? Hold on just a second. Let me get... All right, you're unmuted. You there? Yeah. Who are you talking to? Stephanie Grove, you had your hand up. You know question? She said somebody wanted to share some charts or something. Want to share a chart? I'm, I think it's I don't remember. Start a what? Stephanie, do you have something to share? She was having trouble with her mic or something before, so maybe it's not, maybe it's on her end. I unmuted her and uh, I could hear her typing when um, she was typing, so I, I heard someone typing. Anyone else got anything? Um, Do I know, where do I know you from? B. Dave, are you a subscriber? How did you find out about us? Let me unmute you as well. I, uh, I called you a little. I just was up late one night and I called you and um, when it happened. So 
I just I just told Darla I just finished the Eryctology uh, course there, and I talked to him. So I'm just a huge fan, and I just got back tonight from uh, family. Got on YouTube. I saw you were uh, oh, wow went on tonight. So awesome. So, so I, my kids back here doing this thing. I was like, you gotta be quiet, man. You gotta be quiet. <laughs> no, it's, it's all good. Yeah, we're thinking about doing this uh, for for the YouTube crowd on, on a regular basis. This was kind of a please do. <laughs> so that we can do current events, you know, cause a lot of times I'm getting bombarded with emails and stuff. And it would be much better if I could communicate with people like this and you guys could ask questions that the other people that are wanting to ask too, cause I get the same questions and stuff. So this would be a good place where people can kind of get informed and you can also bring information because here's the thing. I don't get to scour the, the internet internet as much as I used to, to get, you know, news and what's going on and that kind of thing. So a lot of times, you know, I'm in the dark of what's happening. Um, unless someone, you know, texts me or lets me know what's, um, what's going on. So. Uh, Car says Stephanie's back. Stephanie's back. Okay. And see, is she, uh, she's like, why can't you guys hear me? I don't know. Stephanie, you are not muted, so you should be able to talk. Um, not working. Bob Flanders, you want to speak, brother? Yes, thank you. Um, just wanted to ask two questions. One sure. is, uh, when you said CodeFinder, is it www.codefinder.us? Is that the right... Um, web page. Hold on, just I don't think it's U.S. It's an Australian country. Let me see. Uh, code. Let's see. It is called uh, BibleCodeSoftware.org is where you can find uh, Code Finder download. It is a Australian company that developed it, and um, matter of fact. Um, to the far right, uh, I think this company may have something to do with Brandon, Brandon, um, McKay too. Um, Brandon McKay was the one that, that said he found codes in, um, the control text, which were later proved to be fours, but you can see to the far right where you can find the word John Kennedy executed in, um, going to win. Uh, but th is that random occurrence or is that a divine hand? See, that's the thing. That's the fine line where we have to separate and, um, and determine what is actually a code and what is a code. Oh, bless your heart. So, you need to mute her mic. I got it. I think. Such a familiar. I raised three boys from from day one, infants. Uh, you know, like just <laughs> that sound, that smell brings back so many memories of just a precious time. Um, you who are blessed, you Jennifer and your child. What a blessing children are. <laughs> um, I think so. Matter of fact, at the at the tiny chat community. Uh, Mary Harris will remember this. I would have my babies with me as I was hosting uh, those groups. So, um, wonderful, wonderful sound. I have a praise report. Bring it on, sister. How you doing, Inga? I'm doing okay. Good. Um, when we were last on, this is a while back, I had uh, re requested prayer for my daughter's sister-in-law who was rushed to hospital to give birth a little early mm. and it turned out that the baby had to be born by cesarean it was an emergency cesarean the baby had the cord around the neck three times but she was delivered safely and everything is well and thank you so much for the prayers oh that's so wonderful inga hallelujah yeah. hallelujah very happy to hear that. A beautiful little girl. Oh, bless her. That's so wonderful. That's wonderful. 
Stephanie, or do you want to share your screen even though we can't hear you for some reason? She's got some pictures of uh, wormwood, she said. Pictures of wormwood. Yeah. Is this the images that have been catched, caught on Sechi uh, that I've been seeing go around? We can't hear if she can share a screen. We can see what she wants to share. Yeah. We cannot hear you, but if you take your, your uh, cursor and you scroll down to this, the bottom center of the Zoom meeting platform, there's a share screen button, and you can share your screen. And she's saying that it's from her own camera. Ah, uh, no, I don't think there's a way to do that. Um, well, the picture well, is, the picture she wants to share. Maybe so. Here we go. All right. Good job. And see, this is one of the functions, guys, with um, with the Zoom platform. You can share screens. We can um, do a lot here as a group. So um, that's why I was kind of excited about opening this up to the um, regular YouTube group. Um, so, yeah, uh, I, I haven't been able to follow what's been going on, but I've been seeing a lot, to, especially today. Something's been caught on Sechi. Um, it's it's uh, definitely something that I think about constantly. Um, I don't get preoccupied with what's going on in this election um, because this is all just it's all just show, guys. You, the thing you got to remember is prophecy and the Father's will still be fulfilled, uh, no matter what is taking place on the you know stage. And so you caught this on your your camera. Uh, on your phone? Yes. Yes, okay. Well. Interesting. Not quite know what we're looking at here, but I've, I've seen a lot of um, photos uh, from the satellites that are in space that are pretty con convincing. I do know this, um, all governments of the world are preparing for something. Um, and it's very clear. Yeah, I do see that. Uh, is that a lens flare or something? I don't know. See, this is the, you know, the place where you start speculating and start scrutinizing on what is a legitimate photograph of something and what is an anomaly. Um, so uh, the thing is to remember not to get too, too excited because um, it's not going to be hidden from us. Uh, it's real clear from the scriptures that man anticipates this coming from for a while. That's why their hearts fail them. Men's hearts fail them. The red kachina. Oh, I thought it was the blue kachina. Wow. Uh, I kind of like to, to look at evidence like perturbation of the planets, like here recently in the past couple of months. Uh, Mars was, um, was influenced in some manner uh, by some six degrees. Uh, there were several other planets that have gone through the same thing. Um, I posted a article about a French astronaut who uh, attempted to commit suicide and her comments was that um, um, that the world was in danger now the, the article inferred that she meant there was something that governments knew about alien invasion I personally believe it's got something to do with an, uh, uh, another system that's moving through ours Yeah, wormwood. Um, the scriptures call it wormwood. Um, pop culture will call it stuff like uh, the blue kachina or um, nibiru. Of course, all these words will be attributed to it in the codes um, because that's what people will call it. You know, there's going to be people on the other side of the world that has no idea what wormwood is, 
<clears throat> they may call it something else. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is the kind of broadcast where we need Steve Olson over here with some of his stuff. Yeah, it does kind of just look like some sun rays. That's what I'm talking about. It's, it's hard to I can see a circular object there, but what is that? Is that a flare or is that, uh, you know, a mirror image of something? Because you can see down at the bottom with that thing, it looks like it's got blue wings to it. Um, that is a flare. So is that the, the top? Two? I don't know. Uh, Christine is is – Get her hand. Up. Go ahead, Christine, if you can unmute your mic. Okay. I did. There you go. Um, you also did um, one uh, not too long ago about, you know, Yeshua says this uh, generation seeks for a sign, and the only sign that will be given is the sign of Jonah. Uh, yeah. Days yeah. he was in uh, darkness in a fish or, you know, something like now, that. Now, people believe that is what that means. But here's the thing, and this is something we discovered in the codes. Um, the sign of Jonah could possibly be what the Ninevites were shown when Jonah went. Imagine this. What influenced these people to have such a revival when Jonah showed up on the shores of Nineveh and, and preached? Uh, Gil Broussard speculated that it had to be, be something in the heavens. We searched it out in the codes and found, in fact, that Nibiru is encoded right there in that very scripture. Um, yeah. There was probably something that they saw that terrified them in the sky. And by the time Yeshua, Yeshua's time, because of oral tradition and things passed down, stories, uh, it was probably common knowledge of what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah and what happened in Nineveh and these things. So um, I think it's something. He's, there is something deeper being said here, um, uh, to be quite honest. It, 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 that is it, Yeshua's nature. 99.9% .9 of the time, he was speaking, he was speaking multi-leveled, uh, so to speak. Well, uh, recently, um my son was given a very strong dream. And uh, what it had to do with is pure darkness. Yeah. And said that it was so black and so sick you can feel it. Mm -hmm. I don't doubt. Our door. It was at our door, but it could not come in. Yeah. And I said, well, how do you see anything? And he said, it was so bright in here. Yeah. Yeah, you know yeah. when when Yeshua was on the cross, there was a there was an eclipse for over three hours. Um, the moon does not do this, so it was clearly something else did this. Um, so uh, again, this is uh, I'm speculating that this could be the same event. This quote wormwood or slash Nibiru planet X whatever. Um, uh, the father absolutely uses the external to accomplish his will. Uh, the sun, moon, and the stars he created to communicate and for signs and seasons. So um, I think it's, I think it's there somewhere. I think it is being concealed. Uh, it's, it's really clear in the codes that it's connected to, um, to Wormwood. Uh, it's just a matter of who and what culture you're from, what you call it as a believer. I call it the Wormwood event, and I think it's a continuing thing. It doesn't just happen in one day. I think the effects happen over a period of months and weeks and months and possibly up to, you know, a year or so. Uh, a couple of years ago, I made an assessment with some data that I was looking at that there was a collision likely high probability with sighting spring and Mars. Uh, I said that there was going to be a direct impact. Of course, we know that it didn't happen, but there was, in fact, a collision. The atmospheres collided, and there was a plasma discharge. Now, I theorized that had there been a direct hit, that the debris that it would have kicked up in the uh, 
in outer space, that we would pass through it, and this could theoretically be um, what is called the Wormwood event. That's what I saw on this thing, is some, we go through debris. That's why, you know, you see things in Revelation that seems to happen over and over again. Um, 150-pound stones that fall from the sky. Um, it's definitely going to happen. I think the the event that, that you will know that Satan has been cast down will be Revelation 8 when something impacts the earth because John's vision, what he's seeing, he's, he's getting, he's giving you two things at, at the same time. What, what's, what's manifesting on the earth and what's happening in the spiritual. And so if you read that and then go to chapter nine and then see, and as it flows through, you see that he's cast out. There's something physical that happens on the earth. Um, uh, when when the spiritual casting out actually happens. Um, like a transformation or something. Right. It will be very clear to mankind that uh, what's taking place, I believe, um, from that point. So some some have asked me, well, is, is Obama the Antichrist? Well, I believe he's the, he's the leading vessel at this point. I don't think that, that Satan has been cast out and put into, or, or the son of perdition, um, is with us yet. I think the vessel is there, but I think he's still before or under the throne uh, in the uh, next heaven, accusing the brethren. Um, but that's what I'm saying. When this event, whatever wormwood happens, something significant happens with an impact. That's when we know that it's it's began. I've had some criticism by some that say we're not here for that. We're out in chapter four. Uh, so we don't have to worry about all that, yada, yada, yada. I don't agree with that, guys. I think chapter four was specifically for John as an individual, not as us as, uh, for us as a collective people. Um, I think the churches go through something. Um, it's, a, it's a process. It's, it's a harvest process. It's a um, rite of passage. It's what's got to happen. There's none of this escapism. Folks, and if you go and read uh, the Church of Philadelphia and how they escape and what the stipulations for that is, um, you should see some revelation there. One of those is you don't deny, you didn't deny my name. Why is that an issue? Really? So, uh, but I do think we witness it. I don't think we go through it. I do think we witness the, the horrible things that's going to take place. Um, no man is going to stop it. This, this rhetoric with Trump's going to save America, yada, yada, yada. I don't see that, guys. Trump is not going to turn around the judgment that this country has earned. Uh, and we've earned it as a collective people with the abortions and the, the, the gay marriage stuff and the church completely failing um, to stand up for what's right and draw a line in the sand and say, no more, we're not going to have this. We're not going to put up with this. Um, you're not taking the Ten Commandments out of the public place. We stand on this. Uh, but we have, as a collective people, you know, let it happen. And so um, Trump could be the Cyrus connection. Very well possible. But I don't think we're, we've, we've dodged a bullet, but we haven't avoided the sword. Hand Joshua, Joshua, go ahead, brother. I'm sorry for rambling. Just to let you know, that's my son. <laughs> um, about Hanukkah, um, it doesn't, it's not mentioned in the 12 feasts. So what do we do on that day? Do we welcome it in or what do we do? On, on the Feast of Dedication, Hanukkah? Yes. Yes. Um, well, you know, we're not, you know, spinning dreidels and lighting uh, the menorah around here. We, we, we have decided to read the book of Maccabees and make it about, uh, you know, keeping our mind on things of Shamayim. You know, yeah. so is it like a pagan feast or not at all? No, no it's not. And as a matter of well, fact, just read the book. yeah, he's in another room. I'm sorry. <laughs> he just read the book of Maccabees. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Thank yeah, you. No, no, it's not a, it's not a, um, it's not a pagan. Uh, now, now the, the oral tradition of it, that it being a, a something that happened, a miracle that took place where the, the menorah stayed lit for eight days, 
you may hear that this is an oral tradition that cannot, it's not necessarily true. It's, it's not how it went down. This is about a war uh, that was taking place. And I think eight days were, was, was, a, was a battle or something like that. We'll, we'll, when we read further, you'll see. Um, so it's a commemoration of the rededication of the temple. See, the temple was desecrated by Antiochus Epiphanes. And um, Zeus, they put up, listen, man, they were putting up statues of, of other gods, of Greek gods in this Hebrew temple. And some of the Jews were good with it. They were like, oh, yeah, sure. And uh, these Maccabee boys come into town, and they, they put the foot down, and they say, no, this is wrong. This, this is... It's a travesty. What are you people doing? And and they clean they clean house. And uh, you know I think that's what should be taking place in our quote churches today, where it's turned into a place of entertainment and of you know uh, PowerPoint presentations and um, whatever. It is not what what the Father intended. The the original body, the net netzrim, the ones who followed Yeshua. Um, there's a lot of idol worship going on. Um, so we don't make it into to something where it's like, uh, you, you know, we're trying to keep the law or something like that. We just observe it as, as, as for one, for, for the kids to get a, a Hanukkah present, they, they do a lot of reading. So we use it as an educational and motivational thing. Um, uh, but as a family, we also do a, a reading together and it's always biblically based uh, in any of the feasts that we keep Sukkot, Passover, all of these it's always we're talking about the Father and it's a learning experience I think that's what Yeshua was doing at the Last Supper he was teaching them what it was really about thank you sure Stephanie, if you uh, if you uh, if you would, you could stop sharing. Uh, so we'll go back to a grid. There we go. Awesome. We had a great turnout tonight with 24 people. Um, this room will hold 50, by the way. So uh, maybe the more we do this, um, we could get uh, you know some really good discussions going on. I don't want to have it as a place of debate or something to divide over. You know, if you want to come and talk to me about some of the things I'm finding out, um, we'll talk about rapture or anything like that, but I'm not going to fight with anyone and uh, we'll leave it at that, you know, but I will fellowship with you. <laughs> What's the best way to contact you? At Jonathan at the code searcher.com is my email. Um, I'm also on Skype. I, I don't have it open right now, but I do have a Skype account, and it's the same thing, Jonathan, at decosearcher.com. Anybody got any other questions? Nothing you've been dying to ask me <laughs> or throw something at me? Because I've, I've made some people mad, guys. I ain't gonna, I'm not even going <laughs> to... Uh, not intentionally. I didn't do it intentionally. But, uh, you know, when you, when you reveal something that just goes against dogma or doctrine, you know, people get mad and uh, start revealing their, their fruit. So, but I still try to talk to them. I still try to, you know, reason with them. And some, Jonathan, this is Lori. I got a quick question for you, if you don't mind. Sure. Hey, um, as far as, uh, all right, with me, um, uh, most of my family still believe it, you know, it's Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, since it's that case, uh, are they saved or not? Because they're still using right. the, that name. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The scripture says, and he, he says, for my name's sake, will I save them? And this I know about Yeshua when he was on the cross and being nailed to the cross he in a sense um what would be what would be the legal term when you when you and when you use a uh 
he cited from, he used as, as precedence, a part of Leviticus, which makes provision for the ignorance of the, the congregation. And he, he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And so, therefore, they were not held accountable for crucifying the Messiah. Uh, because of their ignorance, because they were blind, they didn't understand, they didn't see this. So um, we serve a merciful Elohim. That is a fact. And um, no matter what the, the dark ones do through the hands of man, through time, to conceal, to hide, to pervert, to lie to you, um, the basic fundamental foundations of salvation is Yeshua came and he died for your sins. And to be saved, you must believe that he he's did that. He rose again, and, and he is the son of the Most High. Um, it's not very complicated. The semantics of calling him Jesus Christ or whatever in the place that your family members are, um, there's mercy and grace there. I don't think they're you know doomed because they're in ignorance. Not at all. However, they're sitting in a you know a lecture somewhere. And they are giving clear evidence scripturally. And I'm going to do a teaching here very soon on all the references that has to do with the name and how important it is. When you're presented something like that, you either, A, you receive that and say, you know what? We've been lied to, and I want to know my father intimately. Or you say, that's a bunch of hogwash. He knows my heart. I, I'll say Jesus, and he'll know what I'm, you know, if you completely reject it. I think the father may convict you and he may deal with you on, an, on another level and even say, you know what? Like he did with me, I married a woman who was in this knowledge before I was. And so she tried to lovingly share that with me and this spirit in me that was very protective of my Jesus, of my savior, quote, savior, rejected that immediately. And then the Holy Spirit started dealing with me and said, why don't you search that out? Why did you just reject that? Don't you know your enemy is cunning? So I started thinking about that. And he started showing me all the scriptures about the name and how important it is. And it started th I started thinking, wow, if I was the enemy, I would want to conceal this name. I would not want them to use the right name or call upon the name, you know, Think about this. He'd already lost at Calvary because he could not decipher Isaiah 53 or Psalm 22, which was spoken through the prophets cryptically to hide it from the enemy. Right. But in the plain text, it tells you the name and how important it is. He obviously knows this. So in conclusion, the enemy would pervert the name, folks. That's clear. And uh, so it's not... You know, you hear this soundbite about, oh, that's, that's sacred name movement. Stay away from that. Well, you better stay away from whoever's telling you that because that's the enemy moving in that person to keep you from finding out your father's name. Right. I mean, it, the main thing that I'm having a problem with is every time I try to, you know, I go to my father's house or mm -hmm. something, instead of saying, you know, Jesus or the Savior, things like that, I just say, you know, Yashua, and he's looking at me like I got four heads. Right, I know. I know. You know what I'm saying? I'm and and he's, he he went to his pastor and said to his pastor, "I think she's in a cult." Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not in a cult. Um, learning the truth. Yeah. Is what I wanted to learn. <laughs> you you would absolutely hear that. Um, you know, they call Jesus, uh, Yeshua, um, Jesus, all of these names. Um, they called, they said he was in a cult. They said Paul was in a cult. Uh, they said the Nazarene sect. Um, so I get what you're saying. And, and a lot of times, um, you're not going to be receiving your own, your own family with, with some of this revelation. So here's what I would recommend. I would not preach to, to anyone in my family. I would lead by example. I would not put it, put it, you know, well, this is what you got and, and try to, you know, point things out because it can get very confrontative and family members do not want to hear that from you. They will completely shut down and reject that and call you names and say you're in a cult. Names. But if you let them see 
you walk in that, if they see a change in your life, um, then there's a difference. Um, I would approach it that way. I had to do that with my own mom. My mom, yeah, yeah. My mom thought I was a little nutty um, until right now. I'm doing that with my husband, so uh, he thinks I'm a little nutty too. Yeah. Mm. But uh, my mom has come a long way. She actually came and visited, and um, she, uh, you know, I didn't preach at her or nothing like that. She don't really know what I do on YouTube or didn't know. And then she, she was sat right over there at the foot of my bed and watched a, a broadcast, and um, and it moved her. And the next day, I had to take her to the airport, and uh, she texted Darla and said she cried all the way home. Um, she Aww. just could not believe the change in me. That she was so proud of me. That uh, she was she was amazed. And I think it was because she had seen the Holy Spirit and not her mischievous little boy. That that. You know, no. in your family, people know you for for who you are, and all your faults, and all your goods, and all your bads. So, right. if you at them and you try to preach at them, they're going to shut down. They're going to they're going to all they're going to go back to is she's got this fault and this fault and this fault, and she's going to preach to me. You know, so lead by example and and let them see the difference in you. And and uh, I, I think when the Holy Spirit can move, that's when you you will make a difference. And, um, and don't quench the spirit. Um, be patient with your loved ones and be praying for them. And, um, and don't be in, in their face with, you know, if they say Jesus and stuff like that. Because if they don't know, they don't know. But there may come a time where they want to know. And you can say, listen, well, here's a, here's a fact. Uh, you go and look at the 1611. That word is not even in there. And a matter of fact, if you look a little deeper and look in the front of it, it you know, it says you right in the front that for the sake and for the respect of the Jewish people that the name of the father and the son was, uh, was not in there that that was actually changed and it was Lord or God instead over 7,000 times, by the way. So they tell you this right in the front that they did this, but it's okay with some people because you know, this way they were brought up. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. And I uh, appreciate we'll, it. We'll be praying for you. I know your, your situation is difficult, Lori, and we're praying for yeah. you. We love you. Um, hang in there. Um, I just wish I could get back to searching the codes like I was doing. And then all of a sudden I got blasted with this. So it's, it, I see it as the, uh, you know, the KOD is just yeah. trying to attack me because I'm trying to do something. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, we're not going anywhere and you're not missing anything. Everything's being archived. You just get uh, stronger and healthier and um, you keep coming to the, to the, to the meetings if you're able to. And um, yeah, we'll be there. We're there for you, praying for you and your, your husband. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, anybody wants to say something and then have you go. All right, Emily. Let me see if I can. All right. There you go. You should be unmuted, Emily. Okay. Uh, like because I'm um I'm a Chinese and um like when I read the Chinese Bible, they keep the they they retain the pronunciation of the father. Like, can I say it? In, sure. Uh, like in, uh, um, it's like Cantonese. It's not like Mandarin. So it's like yeah, wa wa. It's very close. You yeah. Could, yeah, and and yeah, so it's like Yeshua, you know, but they're missing the A. You know, it's very, very close. But uh, one time I was talking with my sister, and I talked about Yeshua, and then she was freaking out, and then she was like, what, who, what? And then it's like, it's Yeshua, it's like the name, you know, and the, the, the name of Yeshua, you know, like Jesus, you know, like, and then she was like, what you, like, what you're learning? It's like, but then I was like trying to tell her, like, she was like freaking out, like, but then I think like now she kind of understand, you know, like the, the original name. So like it's, it's it's like really like how and actually I think it also I like after I you know like found out the true name like the real like in Hebrew name I kind of like burn like make a like kind of like a spark of fire in her too yeah. like now she's like more closer to God but like still she don't use Yeshua name but then I kind of tell her it's like yeah well why you know it's like Yahoo why you know yeah. it's so close like. I was like, I, I, I feel like, you know, like, she, like now it's like I could see a difference in her before. Like she resists me a lot. Hallelujah. Yeah, Hallelujah. 
but now she is like more accepted. Like she always asked me, please pray for me, you know, like like she always like come up like with me and like ask me to pray for her and it's very, very yeah. And then I'm um, using her name is like using Yeshua name is like I don't know, it's like the prayer, like before like 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 the way that I pray is different than like, yeah. what it used to be. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's awesome, Emily. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yes. Emily is one of our students, and that is an awesome testimony, sister. Yes. Um, yeah, so, so, so I think like a lot of like Chinese, like in Hong Kong, like mm -hmm. they, like even though they didn't know the, you know, like the Hebrew roots, mm -hmm. they 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 call upon his name, and yeah. uh, in in that way, they like like I go to a church right now in um in the U.S. They use the name like Yewawa, you know, yeah. and it's like they are like somewhat like you know like. I feel like there's still a lot, like, you know, like things that, you know, like that they need to wake up to. Absolutely. Yeah, but like to me, I feel like, you know, somehow like blessed, you know, in a way like that I never knew before. Yeah. Like, you know that Hebrew roots, you know, it's much more easier for me to see the big picture. Hallelujah. You know? like, just the pronunciation. That's you know? right. It's like, it's like a big picture of like everything. Yeah. It is a bigger picture, and it's got everybody is involved. But the, the, the misunderstanding about the Hebrew roots is people think that's just the Jews. It's not true, folks. That is some 600 million plus people worldwide in, uh, uh, you know, exponential growth. Um, when you go back to, to Genesis, where Jacob blesses Ephraim and Manasseh, Ephraim becomes, he says, Ephraim will be the fullness of the Gentiles. Now, the fullness of the Gentiles is a search term encoded. This is mentioned in um, the what's called, you know, Matthew 24, the, the, the outline of the end times. It's very clear, this fullness, when, when, when he scattered them, he didn't scatter them as in casting them away, throwing them away. He scattered them like seeds of a farmer to gather in, to, to, to graft in everyone who is called by his name. And, um, you know, that's Chinese, that's French, that's everybody, that's Papua New Guinea. It's all over the world. That's how far it went. Um, and, and all of those that are called by him, um, he wanted back. It, it was his will, none should perish. Of course, not will all re receive him. Um, but, uh, the, the salvation is there and that is, I believe because of the, and I'm not going to get into the serpent seed, you know, doctrine, but this, these falling angels and the, the, uh, mixing of the blood, that is why I think he scattered the nations was to, to purge this and, and bring people back into, um, you know, a, a pure bloodline that's such a that's such a deep teaching we could have gone into on that just that one subject anybody else got anything go ahead sister michelle hi uh shalom everybody i just wanted to give a short testimony on when i first started waking up uh several years ago it wasn't that easy. It was a little bit, you know, uh, it just kind of rocked my whole way of thinking because I'd been a, a believer for a long time. And uh, I was raised Catholic and then I became a Christian when I was about 18 and about hmm, maybe uh, seven, eight years ago is when I started waking up. And I wasn't quite sure about everything. And then I really just started praying about it and because I didn't want to believe lies anymore. I didn't want to believe false doctrine. I wanted to know the truth and I just cried out to the Lord, please Lord, just show me, show me the truth. I don't want to believe lies anymore. Hallelujah. That's so and I was, I was praying in my prayer language and I said the word Mashiach and uh, in the, in that moment, um, the Lord stopped me and said, go and look and find out what that word means. And so that, that was like a beginning for me. 
to really dig deep and it just it opened up and just been it's been wonderful ever since it's, and so i guess the best thing when we're witnessing to our family and friends people that have known us for a long time you know and the way we used to be and the way we are it we don't change and all of a sudden become perfect but you know it, the best thing is to try to be an example and to keep growing Amen. and to live it out, you know, and then, you know, when they have questions, help them, you know, so that's it. Amen. Yeah. I would let them, I would let them approach you live by example and uh, lead by example and then let them approach you on it would be the best, um, best way. Super great advice. And also just to realize that um, those of us who are awake, we are coming into the, the knowledge of all the different things the Father's restoring at different levels and different speeds. And some of us have figured this part out and haven't figured that out. And then somebody else will be the exact opposite. And, and there's just, it's so multifaceted, all the things the Father's restoring. And I sort of see it as a that he's preparing the first fruits as if the, that the father's hidden like a prophet in every family. And so he's preparing us. That's why we're at the, we're like at first fruits for our families. Amen. I see the gathering, you know, in ancient times before combines and things like that, when they, when they would gather the, the wheat up, if you can picture in your mind, all these sheaves, all these different sheaves all through the field, just, scattered different places before they come through and gather it all up it's kind of bunched together and that's how i see the 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 uh, the great gathering um in the end times with will be clusters of people who have came to the same conclusions who have um, not been fed at their local churches or whatever and um you know, they're hungry for truth and for not compromising the word. Um, you know, we have over 20 something thousand different Christian denominations. Uh, this should not be so. This is, you know, the effect of not uh, understanding the scriptures. Uh, this is a good segue for what Chris Ray and I were talking about in, a, in one of our Zoom meetings the precepts precept under precept that word pakuti is very deep folks that that has the word codes in that word uh this is from psalm 119 um just like michelle was talking about not wanting to be deceived by dogma or doctrines what does the father mean and chris's discovery was astounding because uh, hidden in that is is it's very clear that the codes is a tool to do that, um, uh, which is you know a check in the you know the the non-predicting uh, category. There's a there's a whole group that think it's all you know it's, it's for predicting the future and changing the future and yada yada yada. We can be heroes and all this kind of stuff. And guys, I've tried to show you a divine hand very clear you can find things before they happen but it's not to predict things and plan your life around you know, try to find your you know the, when the rapture date is it's for things like discrepancies in um interpretation you know there should not be a thousand different understandings of one different script of one scripture what does the father mean and so chris and, and i in this um, zoom meeting was looking at th these actual verses in psalm 119 and I noticed a secret there. It was just right there with the word precepts, the codes. The codes is a way to clarify. And um, we are learning this. This is not something that is, you know, came with an instruction book. So we're actually discovering this. And it's very exciting to see that uh, the fruits of your labor is actually um, worthwhile. <laughs> All right. Wendy wants to know if you'll talk about your co-structure school. <laughs> Can we talk about his co-structure school? Sure. What does she want to know? <clears throat> well, that's what I'm interested in Okay. So what the school is, um, the first is 52 weeks we got it laid out. The first two weeks we teach the letters because not everyone is familiar with Hebrew and in, in, in the letters and things like that. 
and you have to know this to be able to use your keyboard. Huh. So, go ahead. Somebody was unmuted. All right. Uh, each week after that, we give uh, around 10 vocabulary words, which are uh, Hebrew, biblically based, right from, from the scriptures. Uh, 119 is, is a psalm we've been pulling a lot of words from lately. Uh, so uh, we get into the Paleo Hebrew, we get into uh, methodology, search methodology, um, how to use different resources uh, online and hard copy. Uh, we provide the students with two different kinds of code programs, the Taurus Off and Keys to the Bible. We teach them how to use it. Um, and eventually what the, the goal is, Gus, is a setting just like this with um, uh, everyone using code programs. And uh, each, you know, and I've, the, these students are so wonderful, guys. They're different, come from different walks of life. All of them have uh, special gifts that the Father has given them, dreams and visions and, and intuition. Uh, what is it? A word of knowledge. Uh, Kara is very good with, um, you know, numbers and dates and things like that. So bringing it all together in a group like this, in a think tank, uh, uh, is amazing because we can do things in, at such a fast rate that Chris and I were not able to do uh, before. Chris, Ray, and I used to meet in a group like this on, on Tiny Chat and, and work in, you know, for hours, six, eight hours at a time uh, on codes. And, you know, we got a lot done, but nothing on this scale. And, and you know, we've got a handful of students that are already at the module where they get their code program, which is around module seven, it's the first one. And they jump right in. It was like, amazing to see them take off like a, like a dad watching their kid take off with their training wheels taking off. It's just a joy to see like Benjamin is Benjamin still here. Benjamin, perfect example. Uh, just amazing thing is that, that the father was immediately revealing uh, in his codes. And so for me, it was a sense of validation because now I had other witnesses that could say, you know what? He's right. It's there, and it's amazing. And, and you know, it's not just code searcher trying to convince a bunch of people that codes are legit. You know, and and like I'm I'm, you know, getting something out of being the idiot because I, I've lost a lot, folks. I've lost my family uh, because I was pegged as the crazy person that thinks that there's codes in the Bible. Uh, but now there's other people who are sharing in that experience with. Uh, these codes and are seeing the, the results themselves. It's not, it's not a parlor trick and it's not um, just something you can do with any, any um, book. 135 texts have been checked and the scriptures are the only one with anomaly. Hallelujah. So when would, um, do you just do one class a, or like one group a year or have you, no, the way we um, we have it set up is, uh, is is we're making it automated because I may not always be around, guys. Um, some of you may not know, but for the past few years, I have lived with cancer. And so uh, I refuse to go to a doctor or anything like that. So um, he could take me tomorrow. I don't know. Uh, so the thing is, uh, I need to leave a legacy behind. And um, after praying about it, talking about it with, with close friends, um, it, it was wise to pass this skill set on to other people and to archive it. So everything is being archived. We are up to currently um, module 17. We are and we're laying out week to week. Everything is being stored in a very secure place with all these lessons. Um, it includes all the downloads that that anyone would need. So if anything ever happened to me, um, there are others. Darla and Rick, and um, they have the protocol to take over this and uh, continue um, teaching people. So it's an automated, by, by the 52 weeks are up, it will be a complete automated um, course, and anybody would be able to, to do this, provided that they're not some sort of crazy person. Um, you know, we're not, listen, you could be a millionaire. You could be a millionaire and, and uh, approach me with, with, uh, a malicious attitude or some malicious spirit and I'd turn you away in a second 
because I cannot be responsible with, with, you know, teaching someone, uh, the something of a Kohanim, um, this is very kadosh. This is like putting on the ephah and, and going in the Holy of Holies and communicating with the father It's exactly like that. Um, and, and those that are involved in codes that are, that are sitting at their computer by themselves, that are praying in a spirit and are searching things and they get that spark with the Holy spirit. They know what I'm talking about. It's a very holy and special thing. Um, it, it's not something to play with. It's not something to be manipulating to 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 deceive people, um, and and there's some on the internet doing that, promoting a cult, that Rayel cult. That's one of them. Um, so it's something yeah. I think very yeah. serious. Go ahead. Yeah. Sure. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Uh, yes. Fantastic. Hey everyone, how are you going? This is uh, Benjamin. Um, it might be a good time. Can I just share my screen, Jonathan? I came across an amazing table last year. Share it with us, brother. Benjamin is one of our students, guys. Uh, he's going to share a screen. Just bear with me for a second. Okay. Can we all sort, see that? Is that up there now? Um, I haven't seen nothing yet, Benjamin. Okay, bear, bear with me. Uh, please go on. I'll just quickly. <laughs> oh, hang on. Here we go. There we go. There we go. If, there you, we go. if you go to the control bar at the bottom, Benjamin, in, in the center, it says share screen. Yeah, I hit that one. And, and it's not working? Has it come up yet? No, it's still not. Okay. It usually I'll takes just, about a second for it to pull up. So um, Okay. I'll, I'll just try one more time. Hang on. All right. Yeah. And amazing discussion today, guys. I've, I've really enjoyed it. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, are we seeing this now? Mm, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Well, um, it's obviously not going to come up for you. So I'll just uh, quickly um, just tell you what I found um, just a few days ago. Now, this goes right along with what everyone's been talking about today. Um, I found uh, an ELS code, which was a verse it wasn't just a word encoded this was a verse encoded well actually i found three of them um two of them were encoded inside of each other so i'll just share with you what it says it goes right along with what everyone's been talking about sharing with the name with family that sort of thing this is almost like jonathan was saying like an e flood this is like the the father was was sharing this with me i had the hairs on the back of my neck on end I, he gave me the first word last, and it left me in tears, honestly. Um, so I'll just quickly share this with you. That the message was, wailing since the sound of you, the jewel of Torah, to her, the church be you, the mouth of me. So that was the verse that he uh, brought through to me. Wailing since the sound of you, the jewel of Torah, to her, the church, be you, mouth of me. And that was just amazing. That just floored me. Um, it's a bit, it'd be better if it was up there on the screen for you. And the other one that he gave me, now this was, this was two, like two verses encoded inside of each other. I didn't fully understand what the first one meant until the father brought me back the second day to have another look at it. And then I found another code inside of this code um, so i'll read the first one to you and then this is all encrypted in jeremiah chapters 30 through to 37 and when you read the scripture underneath which is talking about the old covenant and the new covenant it just absolutely blew me away so um this one this one is okay starting out speaking of i feel uh the the pharisees okay so just just go with that and again when I say her, we're talking about the, the church. Okay, thick and plump with speech, but slow to move in strength. Where is my Torah? He said darkness to her, destruction, 
necessarily no more. But that was the, the verse he gave me on one day. And then the following day, I didn't quite understand it. And then the following day, inside of that, that verse there was this verse. And this is, this is to do with um, the believers today, the ones that are walking in the name, walking in truth, and shining in them with strength will be the Torah. He has set darkness a cloud, but to her, the church, abundance and wealth, but they, destruction, verily, no more. So there was there were two encrypted codes inside of each other um, there, and it's uh, without seeing the screen, it's a bit hard to to um, share the, the, the full magnitude of that at the moment. Um, but it was just, yeah, true, truly, truly amazing, a wonderful blessing to me. And, um, yeah, obviously, uh, Jonathan will catch up uh, on Tuesday and go through this a little bit more. Um, but this was all put encoded in Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 30 through to 37. Um, as I said, talking about the old covenant and the new covenant. Um, also in there is um, Elijah's cave, right where it says cave. Uh, that's where Jeremiah is thrown into the dungeon. Um, so, yeah, all these amazing things in here. So I just thought I'd share, share that with you. Um, but yeah, the father is just um, upset, I think, with, with um, the major, major body of the church. Those aren't, who aren't working, walking in the truth. And um, that was, that's what Sean read to me in these, these messages here. So I just wanted to share that. Thank you, brother. And now um, we'll try to do a, another Zoom meeting with, I don't know if you saw in flow, but I posted that I want to do a Zoom meeting with um, some students that would not mind appearing on camera. Not all do, folks. Some want to remain anonymous. I have some that are in professions that um, they well just they just don't want to be um, you know out there with what they're doing. So I put a post that said anyone that wanted to participate and wanted to share some of their codes that they're um, they're finding, uh, I'd love to do that with you guys. So. I don't know if you saw that, Benjamin. So um, when we do that, surely your uh, screen share will be uh, fixed by then, and, and you can um, people absolutely, will, brother. Yeah, I look forward. Yeah, people will be able to see what you're um, what you're finding there. Absolutely, it's been a great uh, evening with you guys. It's uh, eleven o'clock where I am, so some of you are on the East Coast are really late to be with us tonight. And I appreciate that. That is awesome uh, that you could stay up so late on your uh your vacation this weekend anybody else got anything else they want to talk about or uh ask or bring up or pray about hi i have one more question for you sure did you are is there any way to start your program now with some of your archive stuff absolutely we're still we're taking a, uh, applications at any time uh, I originally said that I was only going to do uh, 25 students, uh, and this is probably, I wouldn't say, um, you know, unwise of me, but, you know, I just thought, you know, 25 would be easy to teach that many, but, uh, but then, you know, let's do, we've gotten over a hundred applications, so there was a big outpour, people would wanted to do that, folks only have 40 that are in there right now so that gives you an understanding how how many i had to turn away um it's, it's not that you know we're trying to make money here in the end times on bible codes it's not that at all your subscriptions pay for everything all your books that we send you is paid for all your programs is included everything is included in this program i cannot find a program like this anywhere on the internet it is yeah. absolutely a bargain, and we're doing it for the kingdom. And here's the thing. I've seen so much come against me and to the point where, I'm, guys, it got crazy when I was in Dallas, where I had evil working against me, setting me up to discredit me, to take me out, to probably even kill me. So um, to have a group of people, and grow this group, give them the same skill sets. They can't take us all out, guys. There is no way. 
you'll be able to find the same things through the Holy Spirit as, as he's shown me. And so I think I'm safer in a group. <laughs> well, not only that, honey, but, uh, you know, I, I know that I'm pr protected by the, you know, the father, but uh, as far as the trolls and all that, it, working in a group like this, we're safer. We have safer, uh, you know, security measures with the servers and things like that. But uh, it was important to pass this skill set on to other people so, so that, A, I'm not the only witness. Um, there, there's a lot of misinformation out there that I have to combat against. And it's very difficult to do that uh, and be the only one. Um, so to, to train other people to use the software and let the Holy Spirit do the rest um, is, is, is the objective here. And so that's the, um, the legacy I can leave. And it's in, like I said, it's archived. You can start at any time. And we have students that are in different places. Some are very enthusiastic, and, it's, and when they get in there, they want to go through the whole lineup that we have. Now, um, Darla and I both agree that it's probably best that you guys digest that week to week with a, with a module. Now, some can, some are just you know geniuses and can do it all at one time, but to get the the real deep, because you know there, there's some of it where Darla took a lot of time to make it fun and interesting. And so to, to digest it would probably be the best. So if, if you come on the program, take it week to week. It's not a race. You know, you're not missing anything. All the Zoom meetings and classes that we have are, are archived. So, you, you know, even the, the advanced students, you're seeing what they're doing and, and learning from, from them because we're screen sharing. We're, we're going through, you know, the motions of the, of the program. So it's all a learning experience, the whole walk. And uh, by the time we get 52 weeks down, um, no matter what happens to me, it's there. And there's other people who have um, control of, um, of the data and the, and the site to make sure it's, it's available to you guys. Whoever want to learn, whoever wants to do this and that's got a calling. Like I said, it's not for everybody. We can't just let any, anybody do this because uh, essentially, it's like giving a loaded weapon to to a child. You don't want to do that. It it can be very dangerous. Um, you know, I've seen this ruin people's lives where uh, they're they're. I think there's a point where the father will deliver you to a you know a reprobate mind. I tried to counsel a certain individual on YouTube who will not listen to me, and he has put out so many videos on predictions it is not even it's it's it's, it's ridiculous and he's, it's only making things more difficult for the code searcher community um as, as far as credibility is concerned but so uh yeah you can start at any time and and uh it's all there Great, thank you very much. My friend Jill just got on, but she, she can't hear anything, so I don't know what she's doing wrong. But her and I have been really led to learn the alphabet and some of the words, and uh, yeah, it's pretty exciting. So we'll- Now here's the thing. For those that don't want to take a codes program and learn how to do codes, and you just want to learn Hebrew, Darla is putting together a Hebrew-only course where she, she's you know teaching the, the foundation, the fundamentals, of the paleo Hebrew and going through um, her lesson. So that, that'll be up and coming. So if you guys want to do that, it's another course that we're going to be offering. So is there anything you wanted to say about that, Darla? Uh, sure. I'll come over here to Mike. Um, shamelessly plugging my wife's uh, <laughs> school. But it's a great program she's putting together. Yeah, and Joshua was just talking about he's just gone through um, Eryctology, and Eric and I have been talking about doing a class together. So we're putting that together right now. It takes a little time to get all the administration stuff worked out. And I think Eric is going to be making a trip here to, to meet up with us, and we should be rolling that out uh, in the next month or two. Um, just getting all of our, our ducks in a row on that class and, uh, and at the same time running our code searching class. And I think uh, most of our code searching apprentices, we have a few here tonight, would say that the program is well worth taking just for the knowledge they're getting. And those in the Hebrew course will be getting that same 
level and caliber of, of knowledge, certainly. And it's all about restoration to the yeah. truth because so much has been hidden from us by the elites of the different centuries that wanted to control the masses and keep them in the dark. That's why they were the dark ages. And now we're in the light ages. We're mm -hmm. getting a restoration of all that knowledge the Father wanted us to have that was stolen from his people. Hallelujah. And there's a reason for that. There was a 2,730 year curse on the 10 Northern tribes. Most of all the 12 tribes are still alive and kicking today, hidden very well, all 12, because only 10% left Babylon to go back into Israel when they, uh, when they were allowed to be freed and go back and build the land. They enjoyed life so much in Babylon, they just stayed there. Kind of like what it would be like for a lot of us to think about a second exodus. Well, we got to leave Macy's and Home Depot and Starbucks. You know, it'll be that kind of thing. But anyway, the father is calling us back. That curse is over. And um, that's why there's this huge outpouring of information. That's why people want to learn, like Wendy and Jill, they want to learn Hebrew. Why I wanted to learn Hebrew. Why Eric... Uh, poured himself into learning the paleo hebrew why joshua was learning hebrew why um emily and um benjamin why they're learning hebrew it's the things that the father's spirit is doing it can't be quenched it just can't be there's no way to put it back in the box it's not it's not going back in the box it's flourishing and it's growing like a wildfire and still the father has us hidden Father has us hidden so much from those that would would try to hurt his people, but basically we're we're the descendants of those who stood at Mount Sinai and made that covenant. Um, our our forefathers did, and so the Hebrew is in our DNA. It's absolutely in our DNA. So um, there's a reason you're feeling that desire to to learn Hebrew. It's from the Father. He wants you to learn it because he says in his word and in Zechariah 3, 9, that he will return the pure language to us, that we will all worship him with one shoulder. So it's not going to be about division at some point. When he returns the language to us, then we return to the seeing things the way that he said them. We learn, we learn how to discern what his word says, what he actually left for us. We can actually look it up in a dictionary, just like when we were in school, and we looked up our vocabulary words in a dictionary, well, that's what we do here, except for we're, we're just looking at, once we know the, the shapes of the Hebrew letters, it's just like using an English dictionary. It's a lot of fun, and you learn so many amazing, deep things about the Father and His way and His heart towards His people. So we definitely want to um, invite you guys to consider taking that Hebrew course. Um, you can let me know, Darla at thecodesearcher.com. You want me to put you on a waiting list, I'd be happy to do that and let you know as soon as we're ready to to start up our applications for this course. I think it's going to be amazing. Eric is a phenomenal teacher. And um, we're just going to take some, some smaller little bites, if you've had any Ericology at all, and just consume it a little bit at a, small, a slower pace. Um, because we're Western thinkers. We haven't, most of us have not um, learned how to think um, like Near Eastern, Middle Eastern thinking from ancient days gone by, think. But um, Eric does a good job of teaching us how to think that way. And anyway, um, it's going to be an amazing course, and we have very, every every reason to believe it's going to be amazing because the course we already have running is amazing. And the apprentices and the fellowship is um, top-notch, top-notch people. And uh, so Dala, I recommend it. I was just going to share, share that, Dala. Just um, from the point of view of a student, I'm Absolutely. sure Cara and Emily would agree. Um, the, the sense of, um, of, of, as you just said, fellowship and friendship and family in this is, is just amazing. The support is wonderful. Um, and as Dala touched on before, it's like, it's like when you're brought to this and, and you feel it inside of you. Um, we, we do have an innate connection to Hebrew. It is just this um, amazing, Thing. Like when I first came into this, I thought this is going to be so hard. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with time um, as it is, but um, it, it really did come, come quite easily. And as um, 
Peter David is putting up there, yeah, all the characters and, and so yes. it doesn't take long to to um, get your head around the the um, alphabet, uh, and it's just an amazing experience. Um, what you learn is so deep, and if the Hebrew, if the, the new Hebrew uh, Hebrew courses, it can be anything like the code search of course. Um, wow, <laughs> it's be fantastic. So I just wanted to share that. Um, you know, if you feel if you feel led, jump on board. Um, you know, it's just an amazing experience. Yeah, it really it really is, and I thank you for that, Benjamin. And um, you know, Emily has um, been here a short time, and uh, the the further our apprentices get along, the in their in the program, I think they're just they just become so much deeper, and um, they're hearing better from the father. They're discerning because code searching for sure takes uh, inspiration from the father. Absolutely. You have to be walking an obedient life and um, clear and pure before the father. And, and that's important. And um, just these apprentices, the longer they're there, the, the more clear they're hearing from the father. And, the more um, the more obedient they're becoming, the the deeper they're becoming, their awareness and their understanding is becoming deeper, and um, so much of it, it it shares their heart. They come as they come with the hearts of children to learn, and that's the way we're supposed to come. And it, there's so much wonder and so much to be thankful for, and so much depth and jumping up and down because it's so deep and amazing. It's just, it's so different than English. It truly really is, Dala. It's like being, um, it's like well, being four years old again and you know, it's Christmas time or your birthday. When you start finding those codes and unwrapping those gifts from the father, it is just completely amazing. And I know Cara um, just um, uh, put together her first code table this week. Um, I know Emily's not far behind. Um, it is just truly an amazing feeling and, um, yeah, a, a true gift from the Father. It's just just amazing. It's like watching someone... I totally agree with you. <laughs> oh, sorry, Laura. Yeah, yeah, sorry. yeah I'm yeah, still I'll, here. I'll, I'll sorry, okay. Benjamin. No, no, <laughs> I don't <you're> mind. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm fine. <laughs> sorry, Laura. I left you right out of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Wow. Yeah, Laura, you can share. I think he just didn't want to, you know, he didn't want to say anything. No, no, I, I thought Laurie had left. I was just oh, like, let, that's right. Leaving poor Laurie out of the picture, no. But guys, I don't know if you can pick up, but just like, just get this conversation here with Laurie. We have so much fun. It, it truly is a, a wonderful connection between all the students and Dala, Jonathan and Rick um, and Chris, Ray as well. Um, yeah, it's just fantastic. Yeah, it's like a it's like a new family. Absolutely, yeah. Beautiful things. And uh, yeah, we're we're just about restoration of the father. So we're restoring his language, and it's a pure language. English is very far down from when the when the language is first confounded. Go ahead, Benjamin. I might have dropped out. I think they lost the the uh, feed. That's okay. Yeah. I'll just keep talking until they, they jump on. But um, I'm, I'm yeah. here. Who's missing? Is anybody missing? Oh, there we go. Yeah, you're back. You, know, you oh. dropped out there for a little while, Dallas. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know where I dropped out, but... Anyway. Uh, pr probably about, um, I don't know, 45 seconds, maybe. So. Oh, um, well, I was just saying that we're, we're about restoring the things of the Father and, and the language the pure language is pure so we're going back to it and he's calling us out of the things of the world and into the things of his and and hebrews 11 talks about um the believers who were looking for the city whose builder was yahua that would be like his jurisprudence his the the legal system the i mean we have man's laws now that protect the elites from the masses that's pretty much what their job is. And um, I mean, we get some protection by the way, but it wasn't meant ideally to protect us. If you don't know what the Georgia Guidestones are, you might want to check those out. Um, but the Father has awakened us in the last seven years, since 2009, 2010, which is when that 
2,730 year curse ended and we're supposed to be going back to the land. And there's supposed to be a wilderness experience at some point. So uh, we're, we're about restoring the full book, the full knowledge of the full book, what you said to us, what he left for us. Um, and it's his spirit that's restoring these things. So I, I think I accidentally said that Joshua was learning the Hebrew, but it was, was B. Dav. So Joshua was looking at the calendar. So there's two, there's two examples of things that are being restored and one's being called to look at one thing and one's being called to look at the other. But when you come into the name of Yahuwah and you start using it and proclaiming it and not calling on the names that Yahuwah didn't call himself, um, these things, it's like a, it's like a key in the door, turn it and you, and you start walking through it. When you start walking through the father realizes he can trust you and he can share more, more of his Kadosh sanctified things with you. As long as you're not going to mix them in the mud, like, a, you know, like, like if you had a farm with pigs in it and throw stuff in the mud and just pure. Just the pure whatever he said, pure, and, and just when he says it, and then we do it. Like Yahushua said, the man who built the house upon the rock as opposed to the sinking sand in the storm, right? We just hear it, and then we do it. So that's what we're doing. If you feel that in your heart, a, a desire to learn Hebrew, um, this is going to be a great place to do it because we're going to be working with Eric Bissell here. Um, and if you feel a desire to search something else out, do it. I believe that's the Father also. His Spirit telling you to search it out. Hallelujah. Yeah. Are you going back? There you go. All right. I've got a guest in the house, and uh, Rick is here. Some of you know Rick, and uh, yeah, I'm in the kitchen here for a minute. So you were telling about school? Everybody yep. knows about it? All right. So. Uh, well, folks, it's getting kind of late here. If there's nothing else, I'm going to pray us out. And uh, we'll let you know when we do this again. And we'll invite you back. And uh, I'd say it was a great success. It was. Very pleased. And uh, great turnout for tonight. Thank you all for coming. Uh, we love and, and pray for you. I'll be here. We're just so thankful for this group that you sent to us tonight. Um, I ask that you bless each and every one of them, that you go with them, that you heal their bodies, that you'll be with them in their walk with you, Father, that you would encourage them, that you would keep them in the shadow of your wing, love on them. I ask that you bless them in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Folks, we'll see you around. We're going to be posting this on YouTube, so uh, <laughs> be looking for yourself on YouTube. Shalom, everyone. Shalom. God bless, brother. Bless, bless you, bro. Bye-bye.